We're now moving on to our tra chapter on transformations. We start out our chapter on transformations with reflections. When you think of reflection, the obvious thing that comes to mind is a mirror. And that is a very good example of what we're actually learning about. A reflection. There are three things we need to discuss when it comes to reflection. First off, a reflection is a flip of a figure over a point or a line or a plane. So a figure could be flipped over any one of those three things. A key part when we're talking about reflections is the line of reflection. It's a line which a figure is reflected over. Lastly we have isometry. Isometry simply means it's a congruence transformation, meaning after we transform or move our object, it is not going to lose its characteristics. The shape is still going to be the exact same dimensions that it was before the transformation happened, or in this case, the reflection. We have four different ways an object to be reflected. First off, we could reflect it over the y-axis. Remember the y-axis is the vertical axis demonstrated here by the orange dotted line. We're going to flip the orange triangle over the y-axis. The easiest way to look at this is just to do it one point at a time. I'll start with the purple point whose coordinates are negative 2, 1. To flip it over the y-axis, it's not going to move up or down, it's just going to flip across. If it was 2 to the left of the line of reflection, after the flip, it'll be 2 to the right. Our new point is at 2, comma, 1. We've done our first point. The next point I'll do is negative 5, 3. If, we'll, if it was negative 5 on the left side, it has to be positive 5 to the right side for the x-coordinate. Remember the 3, the vertical, is not going to change. I simply go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's where a new point is going to be at 5, comma 3. Lastly, we have negative 3, 7. Instead of negative 3 on the left side, we're going to go positive 3 on the right side, so it is now at 3, 7. If we connect up these points, we should have a triangle that looks very similar to the first triangle, just that it's been flipped. The terminology here gets a little confusing as far as pre-image and image. When you think of the pre-image, think of yourself standing in front of the mirror. You yourself would be considered the pre-image. What you see in the mirror would be considered your image or the copy of you that you're now actually seeing. If we look at this picture here, our pre-image of negative 3, 7 has an image of 3, 7. Our pre-image of negative 5, 3 has an image of 5, 3. And our pre-image of negative 2, 1 has an image of 2, 1. If you look at these, you're going to be able to see there's a real simple correlation that's going on here. And that is, when we flip over the y-axis, we simply are changing the sign on the x-coordinate. We write this as negative x, comma y. We take our original image, x, y. We change the x, but leave the y alone. We flip the sign on the x and leave the y alone. We can kind of consider this as a formula for reflecting over the y-axis. Now that we know that little formula, we can actually do it without a picture. Go ahead and flip these points over the y-axis. I'll wait for a moment for you to do it. Hopefully you remembered, all you needed to do is change your x-coordinate. So instead of being at 4, 5, you're at negative 4, 5. Instead of being at negative 2, negative 3, you're at positive 2, negative 3. Instead of being at negative 1, 8, you're at positive 1, 8. When we reflect over the y-axis, the y-coordinate does not change.
the x coordinate just changes its sign. On to reflecting over the x axis. Well, if you give this just a little bit of thought, you're going to think, oh, I bet you it's just the opposite of what we learned about, and you'd be correct. Instead of the x axis or x part of the coordinate changing, it's now the y part of the coordinate that changes. If we start at x, y for our pre image, our image is going to be at x, negative y. Instead of being over negative 2, positive 1, we're going to be over negative 2, negative 1. Instead of being at negative 5, neg positive 3, we'll be at negative 5, negative 3. Instead of being at negative 3, ne positive 7, we'll be at negative 3, negative 7. Again, if we look at this, it should look exactly like the same triangle, just that it's been reflected. Remember, when we're reflecting over the x-axis, the x-coordinate part of the coordinate does not change, but the y changes. And there you go. Just like the y-axis, with the x-axis, we really don't need the picture. All we need to remember is that when we flip over the x-axis, the x part of the coordinate doesn't change. 4, but the y changes to the opposite. So I was at positive 5 in the y, I'm now at negative 5. I was at negative 3, I'm now at positive 3. I was at positive 8, I'm now at negative 8. And that's how simple it is. Flipping over the x and y axis is fairly straightforward. Next, we have flipping over the line y equals x. This one is a little bit more challenging. And what actually happens with this is you change both of your coordinates. You change both the x and the y. Whoops, I actually got ahead of myself. I'm doing the next one. Here we go. There we go. That's better. You flip the X and the Y. So all that happens is they change spots. So instead of being at negative 3, positive 7, the image would be at positive 7, negative 3. Let's look how that looks in the picture. So we took the green point at negative 3, positive 7, and we go positive 7, and then negative 3 and there would be your point, 7, negative 3. If you actually took the distance formula and calculated it, the distance from the green dot to the orange line and the distance of the blue dot to the orange line would be exactly the same. That would be the true about the red as well. Instead of being at negative 5, positive 3, we're at positive, five, or positive 3, negative 5. Positive 3 and negative 5. Lastly, for the purple dot, instead of being at negative 2, positive 1, I go to positive 1, negative 2. Now you'll notice the shape, although it's turned and kind of in a different orientation, if you kind of ignore the graph and you actually rotate your paper so that it's that orange line is running up and down or vertically, you're going to see that it will look exactly like flipping over the y-axis. Our three formulas so far are flipping over the y-axis, we change the x-coordinate, flipping over the x-axis, we change the y-coordinate, and flipping over the equation y equals x, we exchange our coordinates, the x and the y. We have one left. So go ahead and do this reflection using the formula of switching your coordinates. Hopefully this one should be pretty easy. All we're doing is reversing our coordinates. Oh, 
bottom. There you go. Our last reflection is to reflect about the origin or reflect using the origin. When we do this reflection, what happens is we actually leave the coordinates as is, but switch their signs. So for the green coordinate, instead of being at negative 3, positive 7, it becomes positive 3, negative 7. So positive 3, negative 7. Instead of being at negative 3, positive negative 5, positive 3, we go to positive 5, negative 3. Instead of being at negative 2, positive 1, we go to positive 2, negative 1. And again, if you actually measured the pieces there, they're all going to save their uh, characteristics or the congruence that they have before. There's our four types of congruency transformation. We have one last example here that we want to actually go about doing and it says to flip these points about the origin. Do you remember the formula for this? Hopefully you do. Hopefully you remember what you need to do is just change the sign on both of your coordinates. Doing the reflections is really pretty simple. You just need to remember what you're doing and for which formula are you going to use on each one. The last thing we want to talk about here is just the point of symmetry. And the point of symmetry is the point at which your object is being rotated. Uh, it's the where the line of reflection is at. As we look at these pictures, three of them, it's pretty easy to see the point of reflection. If you look in the top right, the one with the P on it with the two arrows, that has two, one point of symmetry, meaning, or excuse me, it has the one point, and it has two points of symmetry, meaning it can stop twice and actually maintain, maintain its symmetry. As we look at the star in the bottom right, there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different spots. It has the original. And seven, you could kind of think of them as being turns. Seven times you could move that object and it would land back on top of itself and be an exact copy, even though its orientation has changed. The triangle is a little bit of the tricky one. And that one really doesn't have point of symmetry because it, can, it cannot be rotated ever and land right back on itself. It does have a line of symmetry, which splits it in half, but it does not have a point of symmetry because there is no point in which you could think of it as being a spinner on a game. You couldn't spin that triangle and have it ever land back on top of itself. So point of symmetry is a word that we're going to end up using a bit as we do our homework here. That's it for Lesson 9-1. If you have any questions on it, make sure to note it in your notes and bring it to me when you come to class.